This is dry ice, or solid carbon dioxide. This is liquid nitrogen. Both are normally gases in the air. In these forms, they are ultra-low temperature materials, part of the cold chain used in laboratories to preserve messenger RNA, the key ingredient in several of the new COVID-19 vaccines. But these vaccines need to be delivered all over the world, and keeping them at low temperatures throughout the journey is a major challenge. It turns out only one of these two materials is well-suited for transportation. Liquid nitrogen is a much lower temperature than dry ice. It boils at negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit, or about negative 195 degrees Celsius, while dry ice sublimates at negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit, or about negative 78 degrees Celsius. At first glance, liquid nitrogen may seem to be a better option because it's at such a low temperature, but it turns out that dry ice has many more advantages. First, dry ice is a solid. It's easier to pack and keep in one place, and it doesn't turn into a liquid. Instead, it sublimates, meaning it turns from a solid into a gas. Liquid nitrogen, well, is a liquid. It takes up more space and can easily spill. Second, liquid nitrogen does not keep its temperature for very long. It boils away immediately if it comes in contact with higher temperatures. Meanwhile, dry ice maintains its temperature for a longer period of time. However, there is a drawback to dry ice. As dry ice changes to a gas, the gas carbon dioxide is heavier than air and will replace oxygen. We can see this by looking at a candle. We have a lit candle. In order for the candle to continue to burn, it needs oxygen. As we tip the beaker of dry ice over the candle, the carbon dioxide falls down and the candle goes out. What this means is that people carrying the COVID-19 vaccines from one place to another need a well-ventilated vehicle. Otherwise, they risk suffocation. As long as we plan for this hazard, it is safe. Dry ice has the ideal properties for delivering messenger RNA vaccines all over the world.